Did you know that our brains are designed to respond to sexual behavior in specific ways? There are three neurochemicals that give you a brain high when you do sexual stuff like being naked together, getting a hand job, going down on each other, and intercourse. Dopamine is the reward chemical. It makes you feel exhilarated and super excited. Two things to know about dopamine. One, it loses its effectiveness over time. Remember the first time you rode a roller coaster? There was this huge rush of dopamine. The 10th time you rode the same roller coaster, eh, okay, what's next? The same thing with sex. The first kiss is amazing. The 100th kiss is sweet, but we move on to more exciting things. Two, dopamine is values neutral. You get a burst of dopamine whether something is good for you or bad for you like jumping off a bridge to kill yourself or having sex with someone you just met. And this dopamine high doesn't automatically reset, so you're more likely to get physically involved faster with your next partner. Oxytocin is the female bonding chemical. Oxytocin is released in a woman's brain during sexual activity, childbirth, and nursing, automatically bonding her to her partner and children. Vasopressin bonds men to their sexual partners and to their children, and is often referred to as the monogamy molecule. These also have two important characteristics. One, they lose their effectiveness over multiple partners, like a piece of tape that loses its stickiness when reused. Two, they are values neutral. Even if this person is terrible for you, your brain still automatically bonds with him or her. Synapses connect the neurons in your brain. Have you ever driven directly home instead of stopping by the grocery store like you planned? That's synapse connections at work. Our brains are moldable. The more a synapse is used, the stronger it gets. When it's not used, it breaks down and dies. So if your habit is to only date for a couple of months or to have sex with someone you haven't known very long, your brain thinks that's normal and it can be hard to stay in relationships longer. When you have sex, synapse connections grow exponentially stronger and your brain gets hooked on that person. It's hard to stop thinking about them and you feel like you know them super well, even if you really don't. If you have sex with multiple people, it damages your ability to bond with others in the future. So when Mr. or Mrs. Wright comes along, it might be harder to bond through sex. Sex is designed to be bonding, making you feel more connected. When it is bonding, it's also blinding, causing you to miss the red flags in the relationships, which is awesome in marriage because your spouse doesn't bother you as much, but dangerous in dating because sex blurs your vision, making it harder to choose Mr. or Mrs. Right. So how does all this brain stuff impact your relationship? We get it, makeup sex is more fun than working through an argument. But the problem is, those issues just get swept under the rug and healthy conflict muscles aren't built. You know those couples who are clearly no good for each other and can't work through their issues, but also can't seem to call it quits? Their brains could just be hooked on each other. Our brains don't automatically reset if we get married. Studies found that the more women a man sleeps with before marriage, the more likely he is to have an affair. The more men a woman sleeps with before marriage, the more likely she is to divorce. The choices we make now affect our future. Stop. Think. There's no condom for your brain. So how are you going to protect it? There is good news. You might be freaking out right now. Did I totally mess up my brain? but God gets us and wants our best. Remember how God created our brains moldable? Those synapse connections with old patterns can break down and die, and those neurochemicals can actually replenish. Of course, this doesn't happen overnight. It can take years for those old connections to break down and your brain to heal. You have to make new habits by doing things different, like setting your boundaries at 10 a.m. over coffee instead of at 10 p.m. in the heat of the moment. Now that you know all these things about your brain and how it works, you know that we have no control over our brain responses. But you can keep your vision clear, flex those conflict muscles, and bond with Mr. or Mrs. Wright in healthy ways. The choice is up to you.